Good morning, good morning. Friday it is the beginning of our weekend. And uh, we want to thank God for a blessed week and how the Lord has continued to work with us. Brethren, I want to welcome us even as we share the word of God and experience the, the, the love of God of our lives, experience the light of life, even our Lord Jesus Christ, because he is the Lord of Lords. He is the King of Kings, and he is the one that was given to us that we may be able find, to find life and find it in abundance. And this week, brethren, and this month of May, we have been dealing with issues of the Holy Spirit. And we want to thank God that yesterday we also were able to pick some few things. But remember from Monday, we have been talking about the barriers, the barriers that guards us and curtail us from experiencing the giftings of the Holy Spirit, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, and even enjoyment of the gifts of the Holy Spirit and even manifestation of the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. And brethren, yesterday, I talked about things seen. And I said I want to pick up some few things, and I know others have been explained even more, and I want to hammer them more. And I want to talk about, uh, today, I would want to talk about a worldly life. You remember yesterday, we said one of the barriers, one of the barriers that curtails us and oppresses us and denies us the privilege and the joy of living in God's presence is the issue sin, a life of sin. But we encourage ourselves that if we can keep away from sin, then we can be able to find a place that the Holy Spirit will dwell because he cannot dwell in a life of sin. Our bodies is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And allow me just to, uh, moving from there, uh, be able to explain a, a story that I was be able to give on Sunday. And I want to speak it even more that in this uh, forum that I can be able. And I, and I was talking about an, a grandmother who had two granddaughters who went visiting at the time of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of the festive season. And when they went visiting and they were living with their grandmother, they were able to enjoy, they were able to enjoy the fellowship of their grandmother. And they were given chairs and uh, these kind of works in the house. And they were doing it all right. But their mother had one of the cocks that he really loved together with other chickens. But every morning he would be able to call the cock and be able to throw some maize and some whatever, even as he admired it. And they all knew that the mother adored and was very, very happy about the cock. And it happened, which is an amazing thing, that one time when these two guys were praying in the, in the lawns and the, the, the chickens were there and they were throwing things, and one of the girls, accidentally, when he was throwing uh, uh, a, a cob, uh, a cob uh, the maize cob, he was able to hit the, the, the cock. And unfortunately, they tried to land and it was hit on the head and it died. And what happened and what followed there is like they are so shocked, they took the cock, laid behind the house where there was a kitchen garden and they buried the cock. When they buried the cock, then they were able to pretend that nothing had happened. And by the way, when the grandmother asked, and by the way, in the morning, where is my cock? And everybody pretended that they were so surprised that as they were seeking and looking around the gardens, that they were also helping the grandmother to look on the gardens. But the grandmother seems to be sober and said, it's okay. And then after that, the, the, he, went, uh, he went and the, the life continued. But you know what happened? This other sister kept telling the other one, you knew that was wrong. You know, you killed one of the most loved pets or most of the one the loved chicken of grandmother. And therefore he used to tell, and even he used to, uh, to threaten his, uh, her sister that I'm going to tell the, my grandmother. And then what happened is like this young girl started living in a life of oppression because when work was shared, this other one would give all the work to the other one and he would tell him, you know, you need to do the work because if you don't do even my portion, I'll tell Shosho what you did. And it's so amazing that he lived a life of being threatened, a life of fear. She became emaciated. She became oppressed. She became depressed. Every time whatever happens, even when it was not supposed to have happened, and he was able to give all responsibility to her sister, he used to say, when she said, no, 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 I'm not going to do it, he used just to remind him, remember the cock. And the truth is he lived in a life of oppression. But something happened. One day, 
This young girl decided and said, enough is enough. I'm not going to live in this life anymore. And she decided with fear that she is going to go before her grandmother and confess the sin. And it's amazing that she went in the upstairs and met the grandmother. The other girl was just enjoying her time downstairs. And she told the grandmother, you know I've come. And you know I did a sin. I longed you. Because, and the grandmother said, what happened? And then he said, you know what? You know, it's me who killed your cock. And how did you do it? He said, we were, we were praying. And I drew unknowingly a piece of the maize cock. And I killed the cock. And the grandmother told, told the lady, you know what? I saw it. When you are doing it, I was sitting on my balcony reading a book. And even when you are praying and whatever you did, even when you are going to bury, I saw you people. But I've been waiting. I also know your sister have oppressed you. I know that you have been doing all the work for her. I know you have lived a very difficult, but I said, I will not be able to interfere. But I have been waiting for you. And I'm happy that you have come. Can I tell you? Because I knew you did it, I forgave you the day you did it. But I've been waiting for you to come so that you may confess. And it's so amazing that the young girl left in the presence of her grandmother, relieved, forgiven, and filled with joy. And she went downstairs and he continued with her life. And then the other sister thought things were uh, as usual. And he was able to say, no, you are going to do this. And the young girl said, I will not do that. And then he said, no, I will tell the mom, I will tell Shosho about the cock. He said, go and tell her. Just go and tell And the other girl was surprised. And then after that he said, no, I will go to, I said, no, go and tell her. And then she realized that already this lady and this young girl had already confessed her sins. Brethren, you know, there is the wisdom. And from that time, this girl, after confession, lived a peaceful life, a life of freedom. He was able to find joy once again. He was able to enjoy goodness. And even the surrounding became a blessing to her once again. That is how sin does, brethren. When we cover our sins and we don't confess our sins, the devil put us in a place of oppression. We are not able to enjoy the fullness of the Spirit. We are not able to enjoy the gifts of the Spirit. We are not enjoying the fruit of the Spirit. And you know we already have a seal of God. Because this, this young girl never stopped to be a grandchild of her grandmother. She never ceased to be. She never ceased to live in the house which they were living. She never ceased even to have food like any other person. But she lived eating food with oppression, with depression. She was over, overburdened. And that's what the devil does, oppress us burden us, pull us down, even take away our dignity and every stuff. And therefore sin become a big barrier of our enjoyment of the gift of the Spirit and even of life of abundance. Because that is why Jesus came. He came that we may have life and have it in abundance. But you remember he cautioned us. But the, the, the devil comes not for any other reason, to kill, to, st to steal, to kill, and destroy. But Jesus came that we may have life and life in abundance. And therefore, brethren, it is important to keep away from sin. A life of sin is a barrier of enjoying the gift and the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Number two, today I want also to remind us another barrier that I want to talk about is a worldly life. A worldly life. Now, brethren, it's so amazing when we talk about, about our worldly life. You know, the Bible always encourages us and Jesus even cautioned his disciples that you do not love the world. And that is, that is innate. Because if you become, have become, uh, you make a love with the world, you become an enemy of God. In other words, love with the world is an enemy with God. Now, which world are we talking about? By the way, I was leading some materials and one thing of the, uh, I, I, I was able to understand, when we talk about the world and the Bible talk about the world, it's not compatible about the earth and the cosmos and the, 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 the creation of God. No, we are talking about the things that are in the world that in one way or another that become and they are able to take the center place where God belongs. Anything that makes us lose our adoration on God and then we idolize it in the place of God now becomes something that is enemy, uh, enemy with God. Because God must be supreme 
and the purity of our lives. And therefore, anything that takes his place, it is not the right thing. And when you talk about worldliness, we are talking about the passion of the worldly things. And therefore, it is important to know it is very easy to become men and women that can become wadri. How do we become wadri? We become wadri when we allow the last of the fresh. The last of the fresh. Now, the last of the fresh issues that take us away and we become rustful with evil. Sometimes it's like we become men and women. You know, even corruption, by the way, and even issues, immorality, and even those unnecessarily sexual even appetite, and then you cannot be able to live in purity of life, the sexual purity. Those are the things that are worldly. By the way, it's important to know that those are the things that even Jesus himself was tempted by the enemy, either in the wilderness, that you know what? It is like, make these stones to become bread. And you remember what he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by everyone that comes and proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Number two, the last of the, the, last of the eyes. When we talk about the last of the eyes, wilding is about being lustful about what we see. And therefore we become men and women that are not contented with what we have. Remember Jesus being lifted into the mountain and he was shown the, the, the kingdom of the world. Remember it was the kingdom of the world, the thing that pleases us and excites us that we forget our God and we start pursuing them. Like what happened in this country? Men are pursuing money and wealth to an extent that they can steal even from the widows. They can steal even land of the orphans. They can even steal even the money of the oppressed, even for the sick, that they may be able to amass everything to them, and they are not poor. You know, it is so amazing that the most people who do corruption are not poor people. They are rich people, but they cannot see it because they have been taken away by the, a wildly life. And finally, by the way, the, world, the, the life of wilderness is about the pride of life. The pride of life is that wherever, where God has been able to praise us, that we completely forget it. And we forget that we are there by the grace of God. And by any means, we imagine that we are there because we deserve it. The spirit of deservement. You realize that why do we become proud, by the way? Why do we become proud? It's because we forget that it is not us. It is God who has made us to be who we are. Why do we become and feel as if we are above other people? It is because by one way we don't remember where the Lord has taken us from. Remember Jesus being taken to the pinnacle of the temple. And the devil told him, can you know what? You are the son of God. And it was true. And he said, can you just release yourself to fall? And the Bible says that he will order the angels that they may be able to hold you that you may not fall or even to guard you from uh, 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 knocking your, your, your foot on a stone. But Jesus said, and these are very, uh, very wise words, he said, you cannot put your God on test. In other words, he said, yes, I deserve, but it is not a discernment of my own human. I cannot put God to temptation. I cannot walk in pride. You cannot tempt God, brethren. A wadre life keeps us away from receiving the fullness of the grace of God, from receiving the mercy, the goodness, the, the gift of the Spirit, because this is what the Bible says. And the book of James, James encourages the church by saying, and I allow us to remember that, that one of them we need to remember that God gives grace to the humble, but he opposes the pride. God opposes the pride and the proud, but give grace to the humble. May the Lord by his grace give us the grace to stand against wadriness, a wadri life brethren, because a wadri life is an enemy with God. By the way, loving the world and its passion, the last of the fresh, the last of the eyes, and the pride of life is enmity with our holy God. Because the Bible reminds us that we must be transformed. We must be transformed in my mind. In the book of Romans chapter 12 and verses 2, we must be transformed in our mind that we must not follow the patterns of the world, the patterns of wildliness, the pattern of the last of the flesh, the, 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 the last of the eyes and the pride of life, but we must be transformed in our minds by the renewing of our minds, even through the word of God, that we may become what God desires. May the Lord, by his grace, continue to give us strength and the ability to say no to the world and yes to God in surrender of our lives and everything about us that we may be managed by God. And when we break this barrier, you'll be able to enjoy the fullness of God, the fullness of life, 
and the beauty of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in our lives. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.